Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Psych. Just kidding, guys. On to the video. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. It's time for Q and A. Hey everybody, I'm Todd. Hey guys, I'm Jason. This is our little badass Pomeranian Ziggy, and we're... The Gramping Guys! <laughs> Welcome to yet another edition of Q and Gay. Oh, your questions. Yay, Q&A. It's yeah. time for another episode of Q&A. You mm -hmm. ready for some Q&A, Ziggy? You ready to answer some questions, Q&A? Q&A. 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 He's thinking about it. He is, he is. He's thinking of all the questions that he's yet to, to answer. So as always, guys, we try to answer your questions in order that they were received. And we try to keep our responses to, you know, a minute... So I think we should go ahead and just jump into those questions. All right, let's jump into it. So the very first question is from the Decampers. They actually have a YouTube channel. I've uh, shouted them out before, but definitely go check these guys out if you want. And their question is, is there anything that you miss about having your weekend trips with Wally? Well, A, I do miss Wally every now and then. He was just so much fun. But we do miss the uh, the weekend trips here and there. It was nice having a consistent time when we were getting away. Yes, we are 24-7 glamping it, and we're basically living in camping mode, which is wonderful. But it's nice just having a chance once a month or so to just kind of get away for a few days and just sort of re refresh and reinvigorate. So I guess we kind of miss that, but at the same time, with our setup that we've got now, we can take everything with us and we can take much longer and much more in-depth trips. So thank you for your question. Yeah, and it was funny. Uh, we always like to go over the questions before we start the video, so we're a little bit familiar with them. And Todd was actually joking about uh, one thing that he does not miss also about Wally. So I thought it'd be fun to uh, kind of interject that too. What do you not miss about Wally? Little tiny fridge. It's so small. <laughs> and we had to like just really strategically think about how to pack that thing for like a three or four day trip. It was insane. So now we have a nice big residential fridge. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I do not miss about Wally. Yeah, Wally was definitely a tight squeeze for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, great question. Thank you, the decampers. We appreciate it. David and Nick, thank you. Uh, let's see here. The next question is from Judy Wells, and she would like to know, have you ever considered writing a book on organizing, especially for RV living and downsizing from a big home to something smaller, whether mobile or stationary? Your tips and ideas are really, really great. Keep up the good work. Well, first off, Judy, thank you very much for the question. Uh, that was a really, really good question. And we've had actual people like talk about, um, you know, writing uh, like an RV decorating book and stuff like that. And I'm sure you know that writing a book, no matter what the topic, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of research, a lot of organizing, a lot of writing. And to be perfectly honest, we're just not at that place yet. You know, maybe in the future when things kind of slow down more and, you know, we're looking for like another hobby to do, uh, we might consider that. But right now, YouTube and our life in general, uh, that keeps us busy enough right now. And we just don't have time for something else to be added to the plate. But really really great question and it's definitely something that is back there uh, in the brain in the memory banks and uh, we will definitely take that suggestion uh, that you have offered uh, to to light uh, sometime in the future perhaps yeah if, if anybody writes a book on that subject it should be you well I would probably want to write the book more regarding like the organizing and the logistical parts and you could write uh the book uh with the decorating section Heck yeah. so i don't know we could do i don't know different chapters we could do a decorating and organizing a tips and all of that stuff but you know fortunately i think with our youtube channel we like to have a lot of fun 
when we're doing our videos. You know, some videos, you know, obviously aren't for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the videos, uh, people seem to enjoy everything we post. And then other people kind of like the more RV related stuff that we post. When we do RV videos, uh, I believe that we, you know, try to give as much information that we can. And so we, we've already done, I think, a lot of tips and stuff like that too. Yeah. Okay, so great question. And the next question is from Latin Man. Okay, so they would like to know if down the road, if we're going to settle into a resort or a permanent spot? Well, we pretty much are at this point settled into a resort slash permanent spot. We are, we are sort of tied to the area. We do take, you know, longer trips throughout the year, but we're looking forward, as we mentioned in our previous Q&A uh, video, we're looking forward to becoming more unsettled and getting out on the road full time and getting a chance to like really um, enjoy the lifestyle without feeling, you know, tethered to a specific place. So basically we're, we're kind of, moving backwards we're looking <laughs> forwards to the unsettledness <laughs> all right great question thank you so the next question is from travel small live big uh, they also have a youtube channel so definitely go and check them out when you get a chance they would like to know are you as fun in real life as you appear to be in your videos ha 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 no, we are absolutely terribly boring off camera. The only thing that makes us interesting is doing videos. We are dull. No, yeah. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're very pouty. And, very and we cry about how we want to be unsettled yes. and how we're stuck right now. That's right. Having to, you know, do jobs and we can't get out on the road. We mourn. We keen. <laughs> no, we have lots of fun. We, we're pretty much ourselves on camera, you know, I mean. Yeah, we try to be as transparent with our channel as we can be. We want you guys to like know the real us. As we've said before, we just want to keep it real. So the next question is from Truly Remarkable Life, and they would like to know if we have ever thought of caravanning to different locations with other RV travelers that we have met. That'd be awesome, right? I mean, um, down the road, absolutely. We, we have had the fortunate circumstance of um, several people that we kind of know through the, the YouTube or through just RVing in general who have kind of come to us or come to our general area. So we've gotten a chance to meet and connect with people, you know, from all over. Um, of course, down the road, once we get full time, once we get unsettled, heck, yeah, that would be great to meet people and travel with them. Just the sky's the limit. So thank you. That was a really good question. So the next question is from Sarah Conklin. They would like to know, are there some travel places uh, that we plan on going to? Uh, for example, like the Painted Desert, the Grand Canyon, and Old Faithful. Yes, all of the above and more. I, I mean, Jason has this note on his phone that's like this long of like all the bucket list places. It is. It is that long. It is. And I've got tons of notes about places that we want to travel to. Absolutely the Painted Desert. Absolutely the Grand Canyon. All those amazing places. Yellowstone, and Old Faithful. I mean, we want to go to all of the most like stereotypical places to go to and also the best like hidden gems that you've never heard of. Yeah, so definitely um, in the future. We will be doing all of that, and if we're still doing our YouTube channel then, we'll be bringing you guys along with us for, for the journey. Yes. <laughs> all right, the next question is from Padesian Hippie. That's a really, really cool name. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching, hello, you actually have a channel, and you uh, pretty much comment on every single video, and you just seem like such a sweet and kind and generous human being so i just wanted to thank you for just all of the lovely comments that you post on our videos and we're so happy that you asked us a question and that question would be what first attracted us to RVing and staying in state parks your florida state park camping has been some of my favorite because i want to travel around florida and stay in the state parks someday well, what first attracted me to RVing was this man. He kept dropping hints, but finally it just clicked for me. I'm like, wait, we can go out and travel around and experience lovely amenities like AC, but also get to experience nature? Absolutely. Let's go out and start doing that. As far as state parks go, it was a matter of convenience. We live in Florida. We were taking shorter trips, 
and it was just a wonderful way to get out and see some of the best state parks, the most well-maintained, the most beautiful and unique in the entire country. Mm -hmm. Also, state parks are cheap as compared to like RV resorts, and you get usually bigger sites that are more heavily wooded. You feel like you're more out in nature. Another great thing about state parks is I made a lot of jokes in some of our videos about like the dump stations and being all grossed out <laughs> by it. But kind of the flip side of that, the, 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 the boon, the positive thing, is that when you go to a state park, they have such nice facilities there, you don't even need to worry about your black tank. Just use the restrooms there. I've done many a bathroom review and I can tell you that they've all been pretty stellar. All right, so the next question is from Jill Rudolph, and she would like to know what are some of our favorite RV YouTube channels? Uh, I have so many. A lot of them you can actually go to our YouTube page and go to our channel section, and you'll see a lot of the channels that we like to watch. But a few that I first started watching that still really resonate with me was Gone with the Winds, one of the very, very first YouTube channels. That was back when they were RVing. They're out selling the world now. I think uh, I think they're like in Bora Bora right now, and their videos are amazing. They, they just do amazing, amazing content. Uh, but they were really, really helpful and informative because they are definitely glampers, not campers. And uh, I think that's why we really liked watching their videos, but we learned a lot too. And speaking of learning, the other YouTube channel that I watched was the RV Geeks. Love these guys. We learned so much just about how to operate an RV, about all the ins and outs of, of RV use. Uh, but they have the most amazing educational videos, I think, that are available out there on YouTube right now. Uh, one other YouTube channel that I remember watching from the beginning was Eric from Nomadic Fanatic. Mm -hmm. And I've been watching him to the point now where I think this is his like third or fourth RV that I've seen him upgrade to. And I have been following him since he was in that first little camper. But I love watching him and I really enjoy his channel because I've really seen him grow as a YouTube videographer and he's just really upped his game uh, from when he first started and he just has really fun videos. I just like them a lot and they're just fun to watch and uh, a lot of them are very educational as well. He just recently did one when he moved into his new RV Miranda and did this, uh, I think, one or two videos about his whole uh, solar upgrade. And that was a really, really fun video for me to watch because we hope to do solar one day. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I could go on and on and on, and I won't. So that was a great question, and I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much, Jill. Yeah, he watches so much YouTube. He doesn't even watch TV, hardly. Like, he watches enough YouTube for the both of us and, like, five other people. He's yeah. on it, like, all day. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Thank you very much. All right, this one is from Mr. Blinkies. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know who you are, Mr. Blinkies. I don't think you've actually, um, your, your handle's not familiar with us, but we really thought your uh, handle was really, really cute sounding. Maybe you could answer uh, in uh, this video why you call yourself Mr. Blinkies. I don't know. Maybe somebody else knows who Mr. Blinkies is. But anyway, um, this is a good question that segued into the last question basically wanting to know what do we watch on YouTube. If Mr. Blinky had videos, I'd be curious to watch them actually. Yeah. Say. yeah, that's a good handle for a YouTube oh, channel. Yes. And as far as, I mean, he, you watch all of the above on YouTube. You're watching everything, everything from cooking videos to RV videos to travel videos to just anything that pops into your mind, you're clicking on YouTube. Anything you want to know, you can find it on YouTube. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, you know, we, we always uh, try to reinvest into our YouTube channel. And we are actually filming this video on a brand new camera. I have the EOS 77D, and we finally have an actual speaker input in this camera so instead of me doing all this jury rigging to try to get the audio to sound really good 
this camera actually has an input for audio. You'll just have to let me know how uh, this sounds and stuff also in the comments for any of you that are interested. And uh, you can also go to our Amazon affiliate page and I actually have this camera uh, on there as well if any of you have been looking for a new camera. Uh, this is a really, really great camera that we're using too, but I learned everything about this camera by watching YouTube. Great question. Pretty much we watch everything on YouTube. Yep. So the next question is from Leslie K. What are five must-haves for RVers? Take it away. Uh, basically, if you're first starting out, I think like pretty much the basics. Um, sewer hose, water hose, if you don't have a built-in water filter, you probably want to get an external water filter, uh, maybe a water pressure regulator, I'm thinking. Uh, as far as cooking, uh, definitely, I think you'd probably want to get a grill. Uh, you'd probably maybe want to invest in maybe like a patio rug, some patio furniture. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on and on, uh, but I won't. But um, that would be actually a great subject uh, to do a video about too, which we might do in the future. But those are just some of the first uh, few must-haves that kind of pop into my head. So thank you. That was a really good question. Mm -hmm. And then our last question is from another YouTuber called Chicory Travels. And they have a really, really awesome YouTube channel. And actually, uh, back to that previous question, actually, I watch these guys a lot too. And uh, they post really, really interesting videos, very informative videos. They kind of go across the entire gamut where they post like educational videos, RV uh, videos on how to do stuff. Uh, they just uh, recently posted a video on a resort uh, that they stayed at for, for a little while. And uh, But anyway, they have a really good channel, so go check them out, guys, if you can. And their question is, when we transitioned from the sticks and bricks to the RV, did we stay in the same area or did we relocate? Well, we definitely stayed in the same area. I, I work at Universal Orlando, and um, I have a contract. So basically, we're sort of beholden to the Central Florida area. So we stayed in the same general area, but we did move a little bit further out because we found a place where we can glamp and camp every day. Super rural and rustic. There's great nature, beautiful trees. There's a river nearby. We see alligators. Anyway, we digress, but we digress because we get to sort of just stretch out and live this wonderful RV lifestyle very close to home and very close to where I work, but we still get the feeling of relaxation of kind of getting away. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of the uh, one kind of condition uh, that we both agreed on is since we have to stay and live locally, that we would at least try to find a place outside of the Orlando area uh, where we could at least experience uh, the camping and glamping kind of life and filling every day that we wake up. And, and so far, this place that we've lived at has just been really, really nice and we really enjoy it. Yep. All right, well, thank you very much for the question. That was an awesome question. And speaking of questions, we're done. No more questions. So, yay. We just wrapped up another episode of Q and... Yay. Yep, Q and A. So thank you guys for the great questions. And as always, keep the questions coming. Keep them coming. We need the questions. We're having a great time doing the Q and A. And thanks to all of you amazing subscribers mm -hmm. out there. You are just helping us to continue this series. Yep, so bye guys. We'll see you in the next video. You want to say bye, say Ziggy? Bye, Ziggy. You want to say bye? Are you too busy like lounging and sleeping to say goodbye? Nope, he's too busy chilling. Okay. So we'll say goodbye for Ziggy. <laughs> oh, now he we wakes uh -oh. up. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> say bye, Ziggy. <laughs>